Welcome back to the Web Access channel. In this video, we'll be getting into the T method. Let's go. A few months ago, I released three videos on mechanical advantages. Sus. It's a very hard word to say. Mechanical advantages. I don't know. You know what I mean. I released three videos. One on simple mechanical advantage, compound and complex. The simple mechanical advantages one, it's simple to calculate. But for the complex ones, that one you can see up here, uh, on the complex ones, it gets harder and you actually need the T method to calculate what the mechanical advantages of that system is. So we are going to get into that T method in this video. But before we get into that video, hit that subscribe button, like the video and leave a comment after the video on what your take on this video is and if you have any questions. So let's get this conversation rolling. Subscribing really helps out the channel. The bigger that number gets, the more easy it is for me to contact manufacturers and get the scoop on new gear so I can make better videos for you guys and keep you up to date on the latest developments in the industry. For instance, the Petzl video I just did, you can watch it up there, for the 2023 products is because my numbers are getting up. So subscribe to the channel, give it a like, leave a comment. All right, into the video. So I drew out three situations here where the team method especially for this one, is almost the only way you can calculate it. Almost. There are other ways, but I will put a very complex one after this, and then you will see the T-method makes it actually fairly simple to calculate. So let's get into the first one. As you could see in the simple mechanical advantage video, we know that if we put a line here, we cross two ropes, so it's a two to one. How do we know it's simple? Because if I would pull here, the load and the pulley will move up at the same speed in the same direction. It's simple. If we look to this, we all intuitive to intuitively can see that if I pull on this rope, that the load will move that direction, that pulley will move in that direction, but this pulley will move at twice the speed. So the load and all the pulleys are moving in the same direction, but not at the same speed. This is not a simple system, this is a compound system. Now this, officially, it's still a compound system because all the pulleys will be moving in the same direction, but not at the same speed. But this is kind of a mixture between a piggyback and, for me, I would call it complex, but it's not. But start here. So we always start from me as one person pulling. So I put in one unit of tension, tension T method, okay? So if I pull with one here, I put in one unit of tension. That unit of tension keeps traveling through the rope until I encounter either an anchor point, a knot, or a rope clamp like here and here. So I said, that one travels through the rope. I encounter a pulley here, but the pulley doesn't really add or do anything by itself. The tension keeps going through the rope, comes out on the other side, goes down. I encounter a pulley here, so I have a one on this side and I have a one on this side. And it travels all the way up until I have a one over there. So what is the mechanical advantage of this system? Well, at the load, here is the load, I am pulling with a one on that side and a one on that side of the pulley. That means in the pulley, there is a two. In the pulley is two. It's very small, you can't read it, but it's a two to one. Fairly simple, it will become clearer when we get to the next system. What would this be? As you can see in the compound pulley system, you can watch it up there. I said I drew like the, the squares around the two separate systems and we have a three to one pulling on a two to one. So three times two, six to one. But how do we calculate this with the T method? By just writing down, I'm pulling my 
unit of tension, I'm pulling up my unit of tension, one is going into the rope. That travels all the way through the system until it encounters a rope clamp. So I encounter a pulley, the rope comes out, the tension stays the same, it goes up into the pulley, out of the pulley, the tension stays the same, still one unit of tension traveling down until I reach the rope clamp right here. Rope clamp. So now at that rope clamp, in this pulley there is a two, and at that rope clamp is a one, so we could say that in this area there's a three pulling up in that direction. A three on the other side or in that rope clamp pulling up in that direction. So now I multiplied that one into a three. That three starts traveling through the system. I encounter a pulley. On the other side of a pulley, there's also the three. The three travels all the way up until the anchor point. So what do I have at the pulley pulling on the load? Well, a six. So this is a six to one. But now we're going to get it more complex because this was fairly easy to see, but this is a little bit more complex, but still not a complex system. If we stick to the definitions that for a complex system, the pulleys and the load move at different speeds in different directions. If I pull here, everything moves up. Let's start pulling. Uh, one unit of tension goes in. That unit of tension comes into that pulley. On the other side of the pulley, there's still a one, that one keeps traveling, and a one keeps traveling until I encounter a rope clamp. What is this red stuff, you say? Well, the red is a separate system that's attached to the anchor point, could be in the, at the pulley or onto the pulley or whatever, could be anywhere. It travels down, it's a rope clamp and a pulley, and that goes into the pulley on the black rope. This is called a crevasse rescue system in some industries. Let's go to green for the other numbers because what do we get here? We have a two in this pulley pulling on the red system. So this two travels down the rope. That two encounters a pulley. So there's a two coming in and a two coming out and there's a two pulling on the ceiling over there. What do I have? At this rope clamp, pulling on the load over there, back to blue, because we all did blue on the other part, but the other ones as well. So in this system, there is a five to one, two plus two plus one, it's a five to one crevasse rescue system. So with the team method, it's fairly simple to write it out, but to do this on top of your head with a, simp with a sort of easy si system like this, that's doable. But when it gets more complex and there's a couple of pictures traveling down online that pop up every now and then on the different Facebook groups of like 27 to 1 and 26 to 1s, not very realistic, but it's a fun exercise to keep our minds occupied and keep this knowledge fresh. So now we're going to get into a very difficult one. And let's use the magic of video to put it on the board, because here it is. First up, let's start on this side. We're going to be using a set of fours, SOF. A set of fours is a pulley system, block and tackle, something very simple. If you rig it in one way, it's a four to one with a change of the direction. If you rig it the other way, it's a five to one. And I've split it apart. Usually it's double sheathed pulleys, like in a Harken Wingman or a Aztec by Rock, Rock Exotica and Petzl Jack, whatever. There's a lot of uh, different uh, uh, companies who make their own version of it. But I've split it apart and it looks a little bit like this. If I pull down here, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up. And if I 
simple pulley system, right? Because everything moves at the same speed in the same direction. It's a 4 to 1. And I'm pulling down, so it's a 4 to 1 with the CD. If I rig it the other way around, it is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 1, but I have to pull up, which might make it feel heavier or lighter, depending on who you are, where you are, what you're lifting, all that stuff. So if I would draw it like this, it's fairly big, so I, I drew it like this, but now you know what it is. Simple lifting in a one-to-one, -one, the black system. I put my set of fours in the four-to-one change of direction version into the anchor point, use a rope clamp and start lifting. Using the T method, I can say if I put in A1, and we know it's a 4 to 1, so I'm pulling with a 4 to 1 over here. I could do the same here. I put in a 1, it's a 1 on that side, 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 and 1 at the top there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 to 1. So I have a 4 to 1 piggyback, is what they call it. So I have my main hauling system and I put my other hauling system onto it and piggyback. Op terug meedragen in Dutch. So now I take this change of direction system, sort of, and I put it with a rope clamp on the pulling end. And now it changes fairly big. I still pull down, but now this is a moving pulley as well, and it's moving together, so it's collapsing. That means it's a complex system. Let's see, so I put in my one, and then we saw that if I'm pulling down, that I have a four on this side and a five on this side. So it's a five over here. How should I do this? It's a, let's do it like this. It's a five over here, and it's four over here. I'm pulling down. So there's a five pulling in this rope clamp. Five. That means on the other side of a pulley is a five as well. That five travels down to the rope until it meets a rope clamp. I meet the rope clamp. So what is pulling at the rope clamp? Well, that's the bottom part of this system. That's a four to one. So there's a four pulling here. That means that in the rope clamp there's actually a nine. So this is a 9 to 1 piggyback. Also fairly simple. But now it gets confusing and I do this often, this stuff, so I like to doing it. But this is one of those where I actually I made it out of just fun playing around. I was like, what is it? So I needed to draw it out and use the T method. We start at the beginning, I'm pulling here and my input is one unit of tension. So let's find out how many units of tension are at the load. But before we get into that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to always be notified of a new upload. If you really want to support the channel, you can head over to Patreon at www.patreon.com slash channel. And if you do that, you can sign up for the level one tier, and that means that every time I release an educational video like this, you buy me a cup of coffee. If you are interested in getting that software I'm using to uh, show all the, the pulley systems, I'm using V-Rigger for that. Link will be in the description as well. It's a beautiful piece of software. You can make any rigging you want. It calculates all the, the forces, and the, uh, you can adjust the friction for each each piece in the system, you can create your own pieces and overlay them. You can export the V-Rigger files as PNGs, JPEGs, TIFFs as well, I think. Maybe even more. There's a lot of options in that whole program. So if you want to use that, in the description, there's a link. Hit that link, use my code, and you get a little discount as well. All right, on to the tough one. My input is one. The one travels through the system on this pulley. On the other side of the pulley, there's a one as well. 
and the one travels up to the rope clamp. After the rope clamp, everything changes. So let's switch to a different color because we're after the system. Not sure if it's actually... No, we're gonna go for the red system, different color. So at this pulley, there is a two at the pulley. So the input of the green, uh, the input of the red system is actually two. So there's a two traveling through here. Now this is very small and close together, but it's the same as this system. And this is a five to one, is what we saw by using the simple calculation method. Draw a line, one, two, three, four, five ropes. Easy as that, so that's a five. But that means if I put in one unit of tension, it's a five to one. But if I put in two units of tension, then it's not a one, 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 but the two would mean it's a two, 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 two. Five times two is a 10 to one. That means that if I would draw this out to two, 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 that means that in this rope clamp at this pulley right here, there is a 10 to one pulling in the pulley. That's cool. On the other side, the input was two, so it's not one, but it's two, 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 two. Four times two is eight. So I have an eight pulling here. That's not an eight, that's a two, an eight. I have an eight pulling there. That means that if I pull on that rope clamp, I have an eight coming in from the red system, but there's still a one from my original input in there. So there's a one plus eight on that side. That means that we get a nine on this side of the system. That nine travels through the system to the other side of the pulley. There's a nine in there and there's a nine traveling all the way down till the rope clamp where it meets the rope clamp and the forces get added to each other. So in this row clamp, there is a 9 plus a 10. It's a 19 to 1 complex system. Moving up, moving up, moving down, all moving at different speeds. So by doing that T method and writing everything out, you can calculate any mechanical advantage. If you have any questions after this, leave them in the comments. You can shoot me an email at connect at theropeaccesschannel.com or find me on Instagram, Facebook, even on TikTok. The Rope Access Channel is everywhere. Any questions, reach out. I'm glad to help. Sign up for the Patreon, support the channel, thumbs up, subscribe, like, comment, hit the bells, all that stuff. Thank you for watching. I will see you the next time. Peace out. Stay connected.